Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I've got what I think will be a pretty interesting comparison. We've got Gibson Guitars versus Heritage, Nashville versus Kalamazoo. Who makes the best single cut? Well, here we go. Yes, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are having a very good day today. Well, we've got a little bit of a battle of the single cuts. So we've got Gibson Les Paul versus Heritage H150. Now, if you guys are not familiar with Heritage, they're the Gibson employees who stayed in Kalamazoo and didn't want to relocate to Nashville. So they started their own company called Heritage. So it should be pretty interesting because these were the same guys working on the same kind of guitars that just started their own company. So in one corner, I have probably the best Les Paul I've ever played, which is why I've hung on to this guitar. It's a Les Paul standard, very beautiful guitar, sort of in a non-traditional finish, but it has one of the nicest flame tops I've seen on any guitar ever. It's just gorgeous. I added some clear knobs just so, you know, you wouldn't be distracted from that top. Just an absolutely stunning top. So, traditional guitar. Um, this is a standard though, so it is weight relieved. So we'll maybe throw them on the scale just to get a, a little bit of a weight reading uh, on both of them. But yeah, really, really love the finish on this one and the top. So there you go. This is the Gibson Les Ball Standard. Next up is the Heritage H150. This one also has an incredible top on it. Just absolutely beautiful. Now, as I mentioned, these are still being built in Kalamazoo, which is pretty cool. Now, you know, construction wise in terms of the woods used and uh, you know, the tilt back on the headstock, all that kind of stuff, very, very similar with the Gibson, but there are some key differences. So before we plug them in and take a listen, let's just quickly go over what's different between these two models. Right, now one of the main differences is of course the headstock. Now the Gibson headstock, we all know and love, the open book headstock has its roots in acoustic guitars. As you can see, three plus three tuning machine design. The strings do get pulled quite a bit to the sides of the headstock just because it is so wide. And most Gibson guitars have some sort of synthetic nut. Now on the Heritage, they went with a completely different design and there's a reason for that. So you can see the strings don't get pulled quite as much to the side. Obviously it's still a three plus three design so they're gonna go to either side, uh, but it's much more straight through the nut and all of them have a bone nut. So just a different philosophy um, on the Gibson versus the Heritage. Now as for the necks, both of them are made out of one piece of mahogany and both have a 17 degree tilt back. So very traditional from that standpoint. Rosewood on the fingerboard. Uh, the Heritage just has a little bit of a more uniform rosewood, more kind of darker colors, I guess, in that rosewood. On the Gibson here, there's just more lighter hues kind of mixed in with the dark. So it just depends on, you know, what you like in a guitar, whether you like some of those lighter veins kind of running through your rosewood, or if you prefer something that's just straight and dark. Now, as for the neck profiles and how these guitars feel to play, well, the Gibson Les Paul Standard has a 60s neck profile. Very comfortable, very familiar to most people. I would consider it a D shape, slight flattening on the back, but yeah, really, really comfortable. Pretty um, slender shoulders to it and stuff like that. Fast playing neck. Now here, this is a custom core for the Heritage H150. Um, and it's a more of a, like a, a traditional, you know, single cut design for sure. So for this one, what they did is they actually found a 1959 Les Paul with a neck profile that they all felt was very, very comfortable. Of course, in the 50s, they were all done by hand. So every profile on the neck would be slightly different depending on the luthier and what kind of carve they put on that neck. So they just found uh, an example of a 59 that they felt was very comfortable. They took a laser scan of it. <laughs> and that's kind of, uh, yeah, what we have here. Slightly thicker. Um, lots of the 59s had a pretty prominent V profile. Uh, this one's very slight, so I can sort of feel it definitely has a little thicker spine right along, uh, you know, from the headstock to the body than the 60s profile. So just a little bit beefier in the hand 
um, but very, very comfortable. I can see why they picked that profile. So very comfortable, but a little bit different uh, feeling between these two guitars. And other than that, um, I, I would say another big difference is just the, the finish. So nitro on the Gibson, of course, oh, still smells great after all these years. Very, very high gloss, looks phenomenal. And on the Heritage, oh, smells good too. Much more, I wouldn't say much more, but a little bit more uh, satiny on the finish um, because they wanted it to be more of a, like a vintage representation. So I'll just kind of show, if you look at the reflections, hopefully it'll show up on camera. But yes, the Heritage has more of like a, a sort of a satiny type uh, gloss to it and the Gibson very, very shiny. And finally, we gotta talk about the weight. When it comes to single cut designs like this, let's be honest, they're just giant slabs of mahogany and they can weigh quite a bit. Now the Gibson Les Paul Standard, at least my version here, is very, very light, 8.1 pounds. It uses Gibson's modern weight relief, which does remove large portions of mahogany from the body. Whether you like that or not, well, you end up with a pretty light guitar. Now, as for heritage, as I mentioned, this is the custom core. So I don't know if they use weight relief on these models or not, but this one came in at 8.45 pounds. So in between 8.4 and 8.5. So still very, very light. I just don't know if they use weight relief on these models or not. So if you know, let me know in the comments section below. All right, you guys, now it's time for a Gibson versus Heritage tone test. Should be a lot of fun. I'll do some with some crunch, some overdrive, some clean tones. Here we go. Let's see what these guitars sound like. <laughs> So here are my final thoughts, Gibson versus Heritage, Nashville versus Kalamazoo. Now, I think the biggest takeaway, at least with the Les Paul Standard and the Custom Core, um, they feel like different guitars, even though they're under that same umbrella of very traditional guitars. Um, the Gibson, especially the Standard, skews a little bit more modern. It's got locking tuners, it's got more, more of a sleek neck profile, it's got the weight relief, that kind of stuff. And if you go with the ultra modern Gibsons, you can get uh, sculpted heel joints and, and a few ergonomic tweaks like that. Um, so if you kind of skew a little bit more modern with that still traditional design, I think Gibson offers um, a, a very good experience. Now, in terms of the heritage, well, like its namesake, it is really back to the roots of the heritage, those Kalamazoo golden era guitars that really focus on, yeah, those 50s guitars and kind of like traditional guitar making. So when you pick up the heritage, you're like, oh, this is like a time machine pulling me back, right? And the Gibson for me doesn't do that. It's more of a modern experience. Of course, they have their really expensive like R8s and R9s that will do that kind of thing. Uh, but just between these two guitars, uh, yeah, the Gibson skews a little more modern. The, the heritage definitely a little more traditional. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the comparison. If you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel. I will link to both guitars down in the video description below. All my amps and gear I use, all that stuff is down there as well if you're curious. Other than that, have a great day. Take care.